Good day, traveller, and welcome to Cryptid Central. I hope you are well. As you already know, we humans are just one of the species who call this planet home. We share this world with countless other life forms, some similar to ourselves, and others very different indeed. With just one and a half million species of animal discovered, out of an estimated seven million, isn't it possible that cryptids, like trolls or giants, could be among them? The Troll, a giant humanoid being known to have originated in Scandinavia. The first recorded mention of the Troll was in 1276 by the Norwegian king Magnus VI. Trolls were said to dwell in Scandinavia's mountainous areas, as well as in caves, near rivers, and also deep inside Norway's forests. They lived in small family units, and interestingly, would often live in pairs of one parent and one child. They were said to live in father and daughter pairings, and mother and son pairings. Some cryptozoologists believe this was due to a strong instinct that the troll possessed, similar to humans, where a parent would be much more protective of offspring that were the opposite sex to themselves, hence the unusual matchup. The troll has also been described as being highly solitary, meaning they would be less inclined to spend any extended period of time with a mate. The only circumstance in which they would choose to live with another of their kind was if it were their own child. The troll was often described differently, depending on the source. Some reported the trolls were enormous, mountain-sized titans, with a hideous physical appearance. Other sources, however, described them as looking mostly human, albeit with a height of between 8 and 11 feet tall. Some cryptozoologists and crypto-historians attribute the more fantastical descriptions of trolls as propaganda, designed by the trolls' human enemies in order to demonize them. Some accounts said that the trolls would turn to stone when touched by sunlight, or that they could lift and hurl gigantic boulders great distances. At the time, the trolls and the humans would likely have been at constant odds, and stories of the trolls' supposed savagery and brutish nature would have spread throughout human society. Trolls were described by some sources as being dim-witted and slow. Other accounts described them as possessing a high level of intelligence, with their own language and distinct culture, and the ability to use tools. During times of battle and warfare, they were seen to be coordinating their efforts and working together, showing planning skills and high-level thinking abilities. Some cryptozoologists theorize that the troll could actually be an extinct form of human. Throughout our history, there have been many different forms of the Homo genus. Homo habilis, Homo georgicus, and the Denisovans are just three of them. With human beings varying greatly in height, with the pygmy peoples of the Congo Basin averaging 4 feet 11 inches tall, to the people of the Netherlands, found in average to be the tallest in the world today, to the giant skeletons found in Ecuador measuring up to 8 feet in height, many experts believe that the troll, that used to be found in Scandinavia, could actually have been closely related to humans. The trolls were not monsters. They were incredibly similar to us. The only major difference being that they were giants who through human expansion and constant warfare with our ancestors were made extinct. Human beings outnumbered them in population and ingenuity, and we humans have always possessed a strong need to colonize and expand into new territories. Is it possible that a mass genocide took place with our ancestors wiping out the giants just as they did with the Neanderthals? It could also be that, as the trolls were primarily found in Norway, Sweden and Denmark, that they could have gone to war with, and were conquered by, the Vikings, who then set about killing all trolls and giants across the land, one by one. There has also been evidence of giants being found in other parts of the world.
A legend told by the Paiute Indians of present-day Nevada, USA, tells of red-haired men and women with light-colored skin who stood at up to 12 feet tall. These giants had already lived in the area for thousands of years before the Paiutes had arrived. These giants were hostile. They weren't keen on the Indians encroaching on their territory and would attack them on sight. Eventually, the Indian tribes of the area joined forces and ambushed the giants, killing most of them. The remaining giants fled and took refuge in a cave known today as Lovelock Cave. The pursuing Indians demanded that they come out, but the giants refused. And so, the Indians piled heaps of brush into the cave and set it alight. Any giants that did try to make a run for it were shot with arrows, and any remaining giants who remained in the cave either died of asphyxiation or burned to death. In 1911, bat guano harvesters began working in Lovelock Cave. After harvesting around four feet of guano, they found dozens of broken arrows that the Indians had fired into the cave all those years ago. And of course, they found the remains of the red-haired giants. Even in their shrunken condition, the skeletons ranged between 8 and 12 feet in height. The harvesters who found them reported their finds, and the relevant authorities retrieved them. The artifacts from this event were taken by the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. However, most of them have been lost or misplaced over time, due to an apparent lack of interest from the scientific community. Some of the artifacts, however, are in the Humboldt Museum in Winnemucca, Nevada, and also in the Nevada State Historical Society's museum in Reno, such as this jawbone, placed next to a plaster cast of a regular human male's teeth for comparison. Many early reports of trolls described them as being between 8 and 11 feet tall and looking human-like for the most part. In Ecuador, actual skeletons have been discovered, as well as in the United States and in most countries across the globe. This would indeed seem to be proof of the trolls having existed at one time in history, and not just in stories and fairy tales. In 2016, a discovery was made in Pinyang, a small village in southwest China. Several enormous fossilized footprints were discovered, and the rock in which the footprints were embedded showed signs of erosion that would make them several thousand years old, possibly more. The giant footprints measured 22 and a half inches in length and 8 inches wide. The prints were also embedded at a depth of 1.2 inches. Experts estimate that with feet of this size and this deeply sunken into the rock, that the being that left them must have been around 16 feet tall. A highly impressive specimen indeed. We must ask ourselves, if trolls, and by extension giants, never existed, then how did so many ancient cultures all of whom were isolated from one another in their earliest phases of development, all come up with the concept of giants, completely independently of one another. Ancient Sumeria, regarded as the first true civilization, worshipped giant beings over 5,000 years ago. The Holy Bible talks of giant beings, humanoids called the Nephilim, there are stories of tall, red-haired giants with light-colored skin in both Native American and ancient South American cultures. The Aztecs passed down stories of giant beings called the Kinemetsin. The Kinemetsin were yet another race of giants with whom the Aztecs were said to coexist. They stood at around 12 feet in height, similar to the trolls of Scandinavia. Similarly, the Inca civilization is said to have had kings that were giants, with red and blonde hair. Where would an ancient society of people, who were isolated at the time and yet to have any contact with Europeans, get the idea for red or blonde hair, when they themselves were primarily dark-skinned with dark hair? With so much evidence being discovered, and subsequently lost, it isn't too much of a stretch to suspect that there may be a cover-up in play. 
A number of fines have been made, which by law must be handed over to that country's government. More often than not, after these fines are taken by the authorities, they're never seen again. It is known that today, modern Europeans possess around 1.7% Neanderthal DNA, proof that there was interbreeding between Neanderthals and humans. Bearing this in mind, is it possible perhaps that there was some interbreeding between humans and giants, or humans and trolls, thousands of years ago? In cases of humans with gigantism, such as the well-known giant of Illinois, Robert Pershing Wadlow, there may be some truth to this. Some experts theorized that what could be known as gigantism today could in fact be a recessive giant gene, which comes from a minute amount of giant DNA, perhaps even smaller than the 1.7% of Neanderthal DNA possessed by a large chunk of the human population today. The tallest man in known history, Robert Pershing Wadlow, was 8 feet 11 inches tall and possessed incredible physical strength, right up until his death in 1940 at the age of 22. Other notable examples include Zhang Junkai at 7 feet 11 inches tall, Yao Defen at 7 feet 7 inches tall, and Sun Ming Ming at 7 feet 9 inches tall. Is it possible that these individuals and others like them are in fact part giant? Giants, trolls, Nephilim, Kinemetsin, call them what you will. Could it be that the US government and the Smithsonian Institute would rather we not know about the existence of giants or trolls? Would it not be in their interest to have the truth come out? Perhaps there is a certain narrative that they intend on keeping in place, one that doesn't include the existence of giant humanoids. But there are so many ancient stories of giants, so much ancient artwork depicting them, and of course, all of the giant bones and skeletons found over the years. It's funny then how the giants, alleged by the scientific community to have never existed at any point in history, seem to have left an awful lot of themselves behind.